Good morning. Welcome to Jax SBC Sunday Morning Online. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing as you're in your homes this morning, I'm excited that you have joined us to worship. This song is called Praise the King, and there are lots of reasons. Number one reason being our Savior, Jesus, our helper who is close to us. He is a lot. So let's sing. Stand, sit, it doesn't matter. Sing with all that you are, wherever you are. Here we go. There's a reason why the curse of sin is broken. There's a reason why the darkness runs from light. There's a reason why we stand here now forgiven. Jesus is alive. There's a reason why we are not overtaken. There's a reason why we sing on through the night. There's a reason why our hope remains eternal. Jesus is alive. Praise the King. Here we go. We praise the King and the He. There's a reason why our hearts can be courageous. There's a, there's a reason why the dead are made alive. There's a reason why we share his resurrection. Jesus is alive. Oh, he's alive. Praise the King. words are great. The grave could not ignore it. Let's sing of the joy we have. Here we go. The grave. The grave could not ignore it. When all of heaven's roaring, hell, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? The world could not ignore it. When all the saints are roaring, hell, where is your victory? sting the grave. The grave could not ignore it. When all of heaven's roaring, hell, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? The world could not ignore it. When all of the roaring, where is your victory? alive. Praise the King that's defeated. Hallelujah, He's alive. And hallelujah, He's alive. Our Savior is alive. I wanted to read real quick out of Psalm 66 as we get ready for our next song. Let the whole earth shout joyfully to God. Sing about the glory of his name. Make his praise glorious. 
Here it is, verse 3. Say to God, how awe-inspiring are your works. This next song, King of Kings, the chorus is very simple. Praise the Father, praise the Son. But the, cor the verses say to God, how awe-inspiring are your works. All the verses think through how awe-inspiring. We were lost in darkness. We were waiting, and he came for us. Let your heart be lifted. Let's worship and sing King of Kings. In the darkness we were waiting without hope, without light, till from heaven you came running. There was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets. To a virgin came the word from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt. Make his praise glorious. Here we go. Sing. Praise the Father. Praise the Son. Praise the Spirit. Three in one. God of glory, majesty. Praise forever to the King of kings to reveal to reveal the kingdom coming and to reconcile the lost to redeem the whole creation you did not despise the cross for even in your suffering you saw to the other side knowing this knowing this was our salvation jesus for our sake you died praise praise the father praise the son praise the And the morning that you rose, all of heaven held its breath, till that stone was moved for good, for the Lamb had conquered death. Here it is. And the dead rose from their tombs, and the angel stood in awe. For the souls of all who come to the Father are restored. And the church, and the church of Christ was born. And then the Spirit lit the flame. Now this gospel truth of old, it shall not kneel, shall not fade. No matter what, by His blood and in His name, in His freedom I am free. For the love of Jesus Christ, who has resurrected me. With all that you are, praise. Praise the Father. Praise the Son. Praise the of kings.
Good morning. It is great to be with you this morning. Uh, I am thankful for this time, Jonathan and Dustin, leading us in worship. Uh, I want you to know that we miss being with you. Uh, we are thankful for the men and women who are here today who are allowing us to uh, have this live stream service. Um, but we miss being with you uh, in our sanctuary. Uh, but until that day comes, we're going to continue to do these videos and reaching out to you and a time of encouragement for you. Uh, today I want us to be in Matthew chapter 21. I want us to spend some time there. It's Palm Sunday, and so I want us to spend some time in Matthew chapter 21, uh, verses 10 through 11. As you're turning in your copy of God's Word to Matthew chapter 21, I just want to make mention of a couple of things. This is Holy Week. Today's Palm Sunday. So we want to make sure that you know of a few things that we're going to be doing. On this Thursday is Monday Thursday. At 7 o'clock, Jonathan and I will be leading in a Monday Thursday service for you and your family to gather together and to be a part of. So this Thursday night at 7 o'clock, be watching for that video. And then also this sun Saturday, we're having a drive through Easter egg hunt here on our campus. It starts at 10 o'clock, and so uh, there'll be a line formed outside in our parking lot. But bring your kids, drive through. We'll hand out some Easter eggs. Lauren and, and Lisa have been working really hard on that. And then next Sunday... We're going to have a drive-in Easter service. It's going to start at 1045. It's going to be in our parking lot. We want to make sure that you're here and a part of that next Sunday as we celebrate Easter uh, and our risen Savior. But today we're going to be in Matthew chapter 21. Uh, before we begin, uh, let's pray together. Uh, Father, we are thankful for we, this time we have here together with you. Uh, I pray for those who are at home now, whether they're in their living rooms or their car or wherever they are watching this today. Father, I pray that this would be an encouraging time for them. I pray for dads and moms and families that are circled up on couches, even right now, God, that you would just watch over and care for them as well. It's a special week for Holy Week. And today, God, we celebrate Palm Sunday. As we study these scriptures today, Father, I pray that the words that I speak not be mine, but they be yours. I ask, Father, that you would speak through me, that uh, you would hide me behind the cross this morning, and that Christ would be exalted in our time together. I love you, and I thank you for Jesus. And this time we have here, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. I don't know about you, but I love parades. There's something about parades that are exciting, they're fun, there's joy, there's celebration, there's laughter. Uh, when There was a time where my wife and I lived in New Orleans, and we really kind of fell in love with the town. In fact, my heart breaks for what's happening down in New Orleans and right now, and we're praying for those folks there. But this past January, my mother-in-law got us tickets to the Sugar Bowl. We're Georgia Bulldog fans at our house, and so we went down to New Orleans and spent a few days there, went to the Sugar Bowl, and watched the Georgia Bulldogs play against Baylor. One of the things that they did that week was they had a Sugar Bowl parade, and it was down through the French Quarter, and my wife and children and I, we stood right outside of Cafe Du Monde, and we watched the parade go through, and uh, the cheerleaders and the band and the, the, the different participants in the game came walking and parading through the park. In fact, here's a picture of us in New Orleans there after the parade, and you can see my, my wife and kids, and, and uh, what a great time that was. There's just something about being a part of, of a parade that just brings so much joy and excitement. You probably think of parades that you've been a part of or that you've seen that's just been something that's just a worth celebrating and great joy. So today in Matthew chapter 21, we're going to study uh, Jesus as he enters into the city of Jerusalem. And you're going to see a picture here of, of great excitement and joy and anticipation and celebration as people are gathering together around Jesus. And so in our time together today, here's what I want us to do. I want us to take a few moments and I want us to just look at the crowd. I want us to follow this crowd over a 57-day time period. So you're going to see the crowd in various moments and various times throughout the Holy Week. And I want you to see the crowd, and then I want us to end with seeing Jesus in his triumphant entry. So pick up with me in Matthew chapter 21, uh, in, in verses 1 through 11. Here's what the Scripture teaches. When they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus then sent two disciples, telling them, Go into the village ahead of you. At once you will find a donkey tied there with her foal. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. And so they enter into the city. They're on the east side of Jerusalem, but on the Mount of Olives. They're coming into the community there. And so he sends out two disciples, and he says, look, go grab these donkeys. If anybody says anything, tell them that the Lord needs them and bring them back to me. Verse 4. This took place so that he, what was spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. And here's what Matthew does, is he quotes Zechariah. 
Verse 5, tell daughter Zion, see your king is coming to you, gentle and mounted on a donkey and on a colt and a foal of a donkey. So Zechariah is quoted here in Matthew chapter 21. In fact, if you just kind of flip over back to Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9, you'll see these words. Rejoice greatly, daughter Zion. Shout in triumph, daughter Jerusalem. Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off from the, ch- off the chariot from a paphrom. So here you have this story of Jesus, uh, the, Jesus coming into the, to the city of Jerusalem. Matthew then refers back to Zechariah in this Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. Uh, verse. And so Jesus is going in, and there, pick up with me in verse 6. The disciples went and did just as Jesus directed them. They brought the donkey and its foal. Then they laid their clothes on them and sat on them. Verse 8, underline these words. A very large crowd spread their clothes on the road. Others were cutting branches from the trees and spreading them on the road. So notice the progression of the crowd. So here in verse 8, there's this very large crowd that's gathering together. No doubtedly, there's people in this crowd who've been following Jesus, who've been watching Jesus. They had seen Jesus perform miracles. They had seen Jesus perform uh, healing and feeding people and reaching out to people. And so there's this great deal of excitement. And then they remember Zechariah chapter 9. They remember the words of Zechariah and God to the nation of Israel that, that, you're, that the, the king will be coming in on a donkey. And so you can just imagine there's this growing anticipation and excitement. In fact, the verse tells us people are cutting down limbs. They're waving palm branches. They're throwing their, their overcoats down on the ground as Jesus begins to walk into the city of Jerusalem. So there's this great anticipation and great excitement as Jesus heads in. Go back to the text, verse 9. Then the crowds who went ahead of him and those who followed shouted, Hosanna to the God of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heavens. So the scripture says in verse 9 that there's crowds who went ahead of him. There's people in front of him. And then there's crowds behind him. And they're shouting and they're singing this. This is from the book of Psalms. Psalms chapter 118. You can write this down. Psalms chapter 118 verse 25. Lord, save us. Lord, please grant us success. He who comes in the name of the Lord is blessed. From the house of the Lord we bless you. The Lord is God and he has given us light. Bind the festival sacrifice with cords to the horns of the altar. You are my God and I will give you thanks. You are my God. I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. So there's this huge singing going on. Crowds and people begin to gather. Some historians say in this day and the nation and the life of Israel, there's probably close to a million people in the city of Jerusalem during this time. So you can just think through. Crowds gathering together. People rejoicing and celebrating and shouting. Quoting Psalms. Psalms chapter 118. And all this joyful excitement. And they're crying out in anticipation and excitement. Verse 10. When he entered Jerusalem, notice, the whole city was in uproar, saying, Who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. So it goes from crowd in verse 9 to crowds in in verse 8. And then in this, this verse 10 here, there's this huge crowd. The entire city was in an uproar. And people are wondering, who is this man on this? Who is this one who's entering to the city? And people are responding back. This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth to Galilee. This is the one we've watched and, and seen perform miracles. We, this is the one who fed us a few weeks ago and in the 5,000. This is the one who ministered to us and cared for us. He, he raised someone from the dead. This is him. This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth. And all of a sudden you can see this anticipation excitement growing. And people in their minds are beginning to think back to Zechariah chapter 9. Is this the one? Is this the one that God had promised? Is this the one who's coming, who will, who will take over and who will relieve us from the pain and the burdens of the Romans? Is this the one? And so this excitement begins to build and joy begins to set in. And there's this huge celebration as he enters into the city. What happens here in Matthew chapter 1 is, in, um, is on Sunday as Jesus entered the city. You know from the Holy Week time that Monday and Tuesday, as you read through scriptures, Jesus is teaching and sharing and and instructing on the kingdom of God. In the background, there's religious leaders who begin to kind of, wait a minute, we can't have this guy. He's stirring up the crowds and bringing this excitement in. We can't have this. So 
anger and frustration and hostility begin to build in the city of Jerusalem towards Jesus. Wednesday comes and Thursday, and Jesus is with his disciples Thursday night. Heads up to the upper room, has the Last Supper. There at the Last Supper, he tells his disciples, he says, listen, one of you guys are going to betray me. Judas heads out, and the rest of the disciples stay there. After that time, you know the scriptures that Jesus headed out and went to the, 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 the Mount of Olives and began to pray in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he began to cry out to God. And the scripture says that there were sweat drops of blood that poured down his head. In agony, he's crying out to God. And then the disciples gather back together. And in the corner of their eye, they begin to see some Roman soldiers heading into the garden. They're carrying lights and chanting in loud voices. Jesus in his mind knew what was about to happen. And so as the disciples gathered around, I'm convinced in my heart that the disciples, even they believed that Jesus was the one who was going to come and set up the earthly kingdom. He was the one who was going to stand up to the Romans. He was the one who was going to stand up to the power and the authority of the Romans. In fact, you remember the story of Jesus and his disciples when they're in the garden. Jesus comes over and all of a sudden this man by the name of Malchus comes up. You know, remember the story in John chapter, eight, ch- chapter 18, verse 10. The scripture says this. That there in the garden that, that he, I'll read it to you. John chapter 18, verses 10 and 11. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it. He struck the high priest's servant and cut off the right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. At the time, Jesus said to Peter, put away your sword. I'm not to drink the cup of the Father. Am I not to give the, drink the cup the Father has given me. I, I'm convinced that even Peter thought that this was war. That he was going to stand and fight against the Roman soldiers. That he was going to watch Jesus and his power and his might go against the Roman soldiers. And so Peter pulls out his sword, swings it at Malchus' neck, missing, cuts off his ear, and his ear falls down. And Jesus says, listen, listen, put the sword away. And so G- Peter steps back. And Jesus bends down, takes the ear, and puts it on the head, and it's healed. And in this moment, healing begins to take place. And Jesus says, listen, this is what I've come to do. And the disciples scramble in the middle of the night. They take off and go to various places and hide. And then you'll remember from the story that Jesus is taken. The scriptures teach us that he's brought before Pontius Pilate. And there before Pontius Pilate, the disciples have fled and ran. But the scriptures tell us that there's a crowd that gathers again. Go In your copy of God's word, write this verses down. Matthew chapter 27. Verse 22, here's what happens. Pilate asked them, what should I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all answered, crucify him. Then he said, why? What has he done wrong? But they kept shouting all the more, crucify him, crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that a riot was starting and said, He took some water, washed his hands in front of the crowd, and said, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. And then all the people answered, His blood is on us and on our children. This crowd, who five days before this were chanting and singing Hosanna and praises to God, who were celebrating in the streets of Jerusalem, who rejoicing as Jesus entered into the town. This same crowd, these people, no doubt, there's people within this crowd who were part of the crowd in, on Sunday in Matthew chapter 21. And here they're crying back to Pilate, kill him, kill him, kill him, crucify him, crucify him. Let his blood be on our hands and the hands of our children. And there's this angry riot that begins to emerge here in this story in Matthew chapter 27. And you can see the anger and the hostility that emerges from this same crowd of people who, who just a few days earlier were crying out to Hosanna the king. And now they're shouting to Pilate, kill him, kill him, kill him. Jesus is taken from there and he's beaten and he's led to a cross and There Jesus dies, which is Good Friday. Six hours hanging on a cross in pain and suffering. And Jesus dies. Three days later, Jesus rose from the dead. We'll study this next week. Jesus rose from the dead and conquering death. And for 40 days, Jesus walked on the earth, ministering and caring for people. You read this at the end of the scriptures and the gospels. And as he's heading out into the communities, he's reaching out and caring for people. And then 40 days later, Jesus ascends into heaven. Acts chapter 1. As Jesus heads up in Acts chapter 1 and, and ascends into the heavens, you have the story of 
Peter in Acts chapter 2 standing up and proclaiming the gospel. At the end of Acts chapter 1, the Holy Spirit is poured out and the, the, the day of Pentecost takes place 10 days after the ascension. So we're now 57 days from Matthew chapter 21 to this story here in Acts chapter 10. And the crowd had gone from celebrating and worshiping the triumphal entry of Jesus to crying out and asking for his death. And so here in this moment, the crowd's back together. They're in Jerusalem and Peter stands up in Acts chapter 2 and he begins to proclaim and preach the gospel. Gospel. He begins to stand up and talk about who Jesus was and, and the ministry and the life of Jesus and what Jesus has accomplished for them on the cross of Calvary. So pick up with me in Acts chapter 2, this sermon that Peter's preaching. Acts chapter 2, verse 32. God has raised this Jesus. We're all witness of this. Therefore, since he has been exalted to the right hand of God and has received from the Father the promised Holy Spirit, he's poured out what you both see and hear. For it was not David who ascended into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord declared to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore, let all the house of Israel know with certainty that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucify, both Lord and Messiah. So Peter stands up and he preaches the gospel. He talks about the power of Jesus, the power of the resurrection, how Jesus is now the Lord and the Messiah, seated at the right hand of God the Father. This same crowd, stay with me, who cried out in Hosanna, Hosanna, 57 days ago, who cried out and saying, crucify him, crucify him, are now gathered around in the city of Jerusalem, and Peter's proclaiming the gospel. And in this moment, people begin to respond to the gospel. Verse, pick up back with me in verse 37. When they heard this, they were pierced to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, brothers, what should we do? And so they're responding to this preaching, the proclamation of the gospel. Verse 38, Peter replied, repent and be baptized, each one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you and for your children and for all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. With many, therefore, with many other words, he testified and strongly urged them, saying, be saved from this corrupt generation. So those who accepted his message were baptized. And on that day, about 3,000 people were added to them. The same crowd. Surely there's people here in Acts chapter 2 who were in Jerusalem a few weeks earlier. Surely there's people here who's hearing this. They're pierced in the heart. Peter says, respond, repent, believe. And 3,000 people give their life to the Lord. And what do those people do? Verse 42. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to power, and to prayer. Everyone who was filled with awe and many wonders and signs were being performed through the apostles. Now all the believers were together and held all things in common. They sold their possessions and property and distributed the proceeds to all as many had need. Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple and broke bread from house to house. They ate food with joyful and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. Every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. What an incredible picture. Of a crowd who, over almost two months, gospels proclaimed. These people begin to believe. They held all things in common. They're ministering and they're caring and they're sharing. The gospel is advancing. People are giving their life to Jesus as this crowd repents and gives their heart to the Lord. But you know, beloved, there will come a day when there will be another triumphant entry. We know the scriptures teach that there will come a day when this Jesus who ascended, Acts chapter 1, who is seated at the right hand of God the Father, making intercession for you and I, will return. And on that day when he returns, he will not enter into a city on a donkey, but he will enter through the eastern sky on a horse in power and splendor. In fact, this is what the scriptures say in Revelation chapter 21. In Revelation chapter 
21, verses 9 through 17. I'm sorry. Revelation chapter 19, <clears throat> verses 11 through 16. Sorry. Then I heard, saw heaven open, and there was a white horse. Its rider is called Faithful and True, and he judges and makes war with justice. His eyes were like a fiery flame, and many crowns were on his head. He had a name written that no one knows except himself. He wore a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. The armies were, that were in heaven followed him on white horses wearing pure white linen. A sharp sword came from his mouth so that he might strike the nations with it. He will rule them with an iron rod. He will also trample the winepress of the fierce anger of God the Almighty. And he has a name written on his robe and on his thigh, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And then this triumphant entry, when Jesus returns, he will come to conquer the nations, and he will set up his rule and power and authority forever and ever and ever. And he will reign as King of kings and Lord of lords over the world and the universe. And in this moment here, there will come a time where crowds will gather back around Jesus. And there will be crowds who will be saying, crucify him, crucify him. But it will be crowds who will be gathered around celebrating his greatness and his power and his glory. And there in that moment, it won't be just a few people in a city in Jerusalem who are there, but it will be countless a number of people who are gathered around celebrating the greatness and the glory of our God. In fact, John paints this picture in Revelation chapter 7, does he not? Verse 9, after this I looked and there was a vast multitude from every tribe, every nation, people and tongue, which no one could number, standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They They were clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands and they cried out with a loud voice salvation belongs to our God who is seated on the throne and to the lamb all the angels stood around the throne and along with the elders and the four living creatures they fell face down before the throne and they worshiped God saying amen blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and strength be to our God forever and ever amen then one of the elders asked me who are these people in white robes and where did they come from I said to him sir you know Then he told me, these are the ones coming out of the great tribulation. They washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God, and they serve him night and day in his temple. They are seated on the throne with shelter will shelter them. They will no longer hunger. They will no longer thirst. No sun will no longer strike them, nor will any scorching heat. For the lamb who is at the center of the throne will shepherd them. He will guide them to springs of the waters of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. And a crowd will gather together. And they will not shout, crucify him. They will shout praise and honor and glory to him. And they will bow down before him and worship him. And they won't throw their coats before him, but they will throw their praise and honor before him. And in this moment of celebration and joy and anticipation of the King of kings and the Lord of lords, every tribe, every nation, every person who's ever lived will gather together in that moment. And every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And in this moment of celebration, of honor and praise, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the sovereign Lamb of God, will there stand in the throne and we will worship and celebrate him forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. What a moment and day that will be of anticipation and excitement. No more tears, no more pain, no more suffering. This will not take place over a Zoom meeting, but we will gather together and we will celebrate there the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. So you see this crowd. Hosanna. Crucify him. Give the life to the Lord. The church explodes. The gospel is advanced. And one day Christ will return. We will gather around. There will be no coronavirus. There will be no cancer. There will be no death. There will be no sorrow. There will be no pain. There will be no hurt. There will be nothing. But everything, as we gather there, will praise God. And celebrate the King of kings and the Lord of lords forever and ever and ever. And in my mind, I think, what a day that will be. What a day that will be when we gather with people from every tribe, tongue, and nation and celebrate our risen Savior. King of kings, and the Lord of lords. What a day that'll be. Let's pray together. Father, we are grateful for your word. We're grateful for the truth that your word teaches. 
God, we wait in anticipation when we gather together with crowds from every tongue, every nation, every people, and we sing glory and honor and power and majesty be to our God. We long for the day when tears are wiped away, when there's no social distancing and there's no threats of war or coronavirus or cancer or things that hurt and harm us. Those things are gone. God, what a day that'll be when we gather together and celebrate our risen Savior forever and ever and ever. What a day that'll be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. everything new Jesus one day you will bind every wound the former things shall all pass away no more tears one day you'll make sense of it all Jesus one day every question resolved Every anxious thought left behind, no more fear. When we all, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, We'll sing and shout the victory. One day we will see face to face. Jesus, is there a greater vision of grace? And in the moment we shall be changed on that day. One day we'll be free, free indeed, Jesus. One day all the struggle will cease to see. And we will see your glory revealed. And on that day, when we all get to heaven, a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus we'll sing and shout the victory when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be to see him when we We'll sing and shout the victory. to face Jesus is there a greater vision of grace and in the moment we shall be changed in the moment we shall be changed in the moment we shall be changed on that day When we all 
get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory, we'll sing and shout the victory.